and there are a lot of challenges in, 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 the, uh, in the marketplace. I know that most of you look forward to practicing as either in private practice or state attorneys or with the DPP's office and some of you reluctantly accept to be magistrates, I don't know why, but not many are venturing out in the commercial, in the business sector. Okay, I think we are shy, maybe there may be risk and so on, but again, I see your, your future really, you should not limit yourself to horizon because you still have a possibility to develop and to move further. So to sum up, really, I want once again to thank the Bar Association, Student Bar of the 29th cohort, for their invitation and, of course, to be able to speak to you at the opening of your gala. And I hope I am not sending between your music and Bongo flavor. <laughs> so I would end up here and to thank you very much. Uh, and I would like, uh, uh, when I finish, to invite Ambassador Mopachu, as you know, who was Secretary General of the East African community, himself is a lawyer uh, from, from the uh, Faculty of Law University of Dar es Salaam, but also he's a business leader, he's a business leader uh, in the banking, in the, in, the, in the commerce, in trading industry, but also, as I said, as a former ambassador to France and so on, Spain. So for him to share a little bit some of his perspective, I would say, is an, is an elder statesman to me because uh, 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 to share a few words and by the way he was also for many years uh, uh, de facto chairman of the council of the University of Dar es Salaam so uh, these are The best part of my life was um, I was a broadcaster. I, I worked as a, as a young man. Uh, when I finished um, what you call Form 4, we used to call it Standard 12, at Tabora School, which was the Eton of, um, of East Africa. Um, I used to work at uh, Radio Tanzania as an announcer. And even when I joined the university, then it was University College, uh, now University of Dar es Salaam. Every Friday, I used to take charge of the studio at Radio Tanzania from 6 o'clock until midnight. And I um, used to give you the best music in the world. If you read my CV, it's not there. But today you have this very privileged uh, group of uh, young girls, boys, and I could see a bit of some elderly people who are still aspiring also to, to be practicing lawyers. Congratulations to you. It's never too late to go, to go into, uh, into practicing. But you see, my young brother, Chande, he is truly my young brother um, from a relationship of my late father and his late father. Um, but I was really coming on, the, on his back, you know, to give him the comfort of having somebody whom, who can hold his hand before he misses a step. A step. Um, so here I am, I'm not supposed to be a speaker at all. But you see, I love the university. I love this law school. And my brother, Bakari Mapacho, was minister of the establishment of this law school. And he sends, and he sends his greetings, incidentally, uh, for being here and to say he wishes you all the best. I just want to share with you a more controversial side of the role of lawyers 
uh, in what you would call a democratic society. Around the world today, there is what is called the decline in democracy. Trumpism, populism, nationalism, away from the Nyerereism, where the focus is on the growth of a people, of your own society. And Trump says America first, but America first means what when America is part of a global society? Nyerere loved his own country, but he saw Tanzania within a global context. You know, the other day I was interviewing um, um, with Professor Mandosia. We are writing a book on how to remember Mwali Nyerere. And I was interviewing, I want to mention this person is one of the elderly uh, people who worked very closely uh, with Mwalimu. And um, in remembering Mwalimu, you know, he was really saying, the best way to remember Mwalimu is to think about the best thing that he's, he did for young people. You know, when I was young, you can't believe it, here at the university, I was chairman of the Dan Youth League in 1967. And, and in 1968, he took me with him to go to China and to North Korea. And everybody was surprised why and why not. So I want, I want you to understand this evening uh, what my brother has really been saying. Uh, is, is, is uh, for you to consider uh, about the changes that are taking place. But I want to emphasize the challenges of lawyers responding to a democratic society are huge. And I think I, think I wrote about, um, about four things that I wanted to talk to you about. One is the administration of justice. I think um, the Chief Justice has um, mentioned, I'm very much concerned, I worked as a District Development Director in Bariadi. I was the first District Development Director of Bariadi District in 1973. I was a young man. There was no, water was being pumped straight from the river into your house. There was no power, there was no bank, and of course there was no court. There was no form of justice anywhere. You had to go all the way to Shinyanga. That, that situation somehow, dramatically, has not changed much. A lot has been done, and, and one thing about President Magufuli, is that during these four years, he's done a lot in trying to bridge this particular deficit, but a lot still needs to be done. And the challenge, be articled lawyer, you have your certificate, and then what do you do? I'm told there are about 600 of you here, and I think there are so many out there. I was chairman of the University of Dodoma, and I realized that out of the 17,000 who graduate from there, 80% don't find jobs. Only 15% get absorbed into the government system. The rest has, have got to scavenge, scavenge around to get a job. It's a very difficult world for you. So fine, I'm glad that you are here. But the administrative justice system is yet to cope with the unleashing of so many young lawyers coming into society. So what does it really mean? It really means that you, have, you are on your own. Now, being in your own means that you have got to be creative, you have got to be innovative, you have got to say, you cannot do it on your own. B3, B4, B5, 
with different expertise because not all of you, some of you will be criminal lawyers, some of you will be civil lawyers, some of you will be good uh, banking lawyers or insurance lawyers. You need to assess what are your different competencies, your different um, um, uh, intellectual capacities and link your efforts uh, to, work, um, to work together. Um, the second point is that democracy in the, in the modern world is the people's demand, and particularly lawyers and young lawyers at that, because your demands now are much larger than those of elderly people like, like us here. In striking a balance, in striking a balance, in the arms of government. The arms of government, I think you would have been taught that there is the executive, there is the legislature, and then there is the, what is the third one? The legislature and the judiciary, and the judiciary. Now, to strike a balance is also a complex matter. Many people, they have recourse on the courts. And I know, I sit on the board of a bank, and I know some cases take two, three, four years to be resolved. And the bank has spent money to the client. He uses whatever means the case keeps on being postponed, postponed, postponed until in one case the guilty person just moved to the United States. You have those kinds of situations. People escape justice by just missing. They are missing from the legal system. So, so the other thing is the freedom of assembly lies at the heart of the democratic society. And the, the judicial system is there to ensure that that, in fact, is assured. But is it really assured? You expect young people to be very bold in addressing the deficits in the strike of balance between the judiciary and the executive. Where some decisions that are taken in freezing a newspaper or abolishing a newspaper, is it a matter that can be challenged in a court of law? Would you be bold to take that, that particular case? There is an MIT professor you know MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has written a book, the, the what is the title of that book? Um, um, Fortune Favors the Board. Fortune Favors the Board. I'm saying justice. How many of our lawyers are bold enough to confront the, 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 the justice system, the courts of law, to challenge what is unconstitutional or what violates the rights of individuals, the human rights, the rights to speak, the rights to assembly. This is the role of lawyers, and particularly the young lawyers. The other thing that I want to talk to you is the the surge in joblessness, the surge in lack of employment. Is, is, there aren't jobs. Why? Why? Because if the economy is not growing, and it's around the world, the major problem right now is a lot of young people 
who graduate don't find jobs. Now, when they find jobs and the economy declines, the corporates, the companies there you work with, quickly terminate you. Because how do they pay you when the business is down? Now, what, how do you exercise your rights as an employee? So you look at the state of the labor law. How many of you have thought about concentrating on labor law? I'm not so sure. Because I, I, think, I think at the law school, you don't go into detail over these legal professional areas. You're supposed to have covered this at the at the at the laws at the uh, at the what do you call it Father of law, okay, and not many of you would probably have gone through those those legal areas or or, or law areas which are in line with the current complex environments. The current economic environments point to the challenge of economic, of technology, of labor, that means employment. The, the, the still concentration of practicing in law. How good is your law of evidence? How good is your law of criminal procedure? There is very little concentration in matters that are important for the current environment. And that is international law, commercial law, when there is a, a problem of an, of, a, of, a, of an investment company which is, uh, which is foreign, and then there is arbitration, and you are recruited to be the, um, uh, in the arbitration, how much do you really know about international criminal law, I mean uh, economic law? How much do you really know about the labor rights of an employee? How much are you sensitive to generic um, um, gender issues where women are targeted and they suffer most? They are the first to be targeted out. Are you, are you sensitive about the rights of, gen, of, uh, of women as employees in, in organizations? How much of that are you exposed, uh, are you exposed to on? Finally, the role of media. The role of media. My appeal to you is that you should really try as much as possible to understand the dynamics of the role of media. Because media is the gatekeeper. It's the gatekeeper. It protects the rights of individuals. It speaks for the individuals. It is the platform, the avenue for, for, for views you know, of people. But they are, they are legal rights. And you've got, I don't know how much of media law you actually know. And in, in your legal practice, how much do you know about how to defend your candidates? Monanchi uh, or IPP media, you know, when they are confronted uh, with legal sanction uh, over certain publications uh, which are directed at promoting this the free freedom of. Uh, so, you know, my my young brother asked me to say a little bit about um, your importance and the challenges that you are going to face. Um, I'm not, I'm not. I read law. I'm not a lawyer. Um, so you forgive me for not uh, uh, responding very much to what you expected. Um, but I hope whatever that I've said uh, will add value uh, to what you are doing here at the law school. Thank you very much.
I believe we have heard the message for young lawyers and the future lawyers. So I welcome any questions. If you have any questions,
Yes, of course, there are sometimes we are filing cases, counterclaims, written statement of defense. There is a spot to record time bar or timelines for filing maybe an appeal or whatever the case. But our in Tanzania, we are just developing to an extent that we want to adapt to that systems while we are not yet. We don't have even laws governing the process, rules and regulations. So if we adapt in that system, what will be what can I say on issues of maybe time bars in my what do you call it laptops or device which I used to send maybe my written statement of defense which in my view I was within a timeline. But once it comes to other side or of the part of judiciary or part of the defendant maybe I'm not I didn't even send you a written copy of maybe a written statement of defense from this person. Then I have my laptop. I will tell it before the court of law as I I tell it before the court of law that this is my evidence that I have been already sent to within a time. So maybe that is where we can suggest to the judiciary. Maybe you are there at the top, still you are retired, but you are still part of it because they will take you with your advice not for granted, as not like mine, but like Osman, the counter Osman. <laughs> they will take it as just a suggestion that. Yes, of course, we have adapted from, to, to just change from this, what we call the analog ways to electronic means of filing this appeals and the written But once it comes to a matter of proving before that, yes, I have been filed within a time, that is, the challenge comes, we don't have the rules, laws, how can you go there to other means of, you don't know, electronic filings, but there is no laws, yes, we have electronic transactions act that is the uh, different laws which governing other things. So maybe you just send our messages there that we are just adapting a new rule, a new system, which yet we don't have even the laws regulating that means. That is my suggestion. Thank you for the questions. Because we have unlimited uh, limited time, I would like to welcome the Honorable Justice to give the responses. Yeah, thank you very much. Maybe if you don't mind, I can speak from here. Uh, uh, the, the first question is a question of uh, uh, substantive justice versus technicality uh, of the law, and I think we have moved away. From really dominant uh, thinking in terms of emphasizing technicalities of the law, and that is why you have uh, these amendments in the last year of the Civil Procedure Code and so on, uh, the Appellate Jurisdiction Act, and so on, of, of emphasizing is what uh, your colleague was saying. The uh, the overriding principles. Okay, I know also that they have been uh, subject to different interpretations in terms of uh, the applicability. But again, I think whenever there is a conflict, okay, it is the jurisprudence. You know, the more conflict there is, the more jurisprudence will, will evolve. But there are no sort of clear-cut cases. Okay, they are definitely now, for example, I would say that there is less application than petitions before the courts which are being struck out on technicality, much less. Advocates also are finding less preliminary objections on technicalities. A lot of uh, uh, procedural law is also being developed to take care of this ambiguity. Okay, so for example, there is now a more tolerance of defects of affidavits than was before. 
Okay, I think you will notice in the number of cases in the newspaper even last week or so. Okay, that you know a mere defect in affidavit doesn't render it, you know, wholly incompetent and so on and so forth. So there is there is a, a development, but we've moved away from really you know very technicality because sometimes it was too too much technicality. Okay, so because you have. The judges, instead of dealing with substantive cases, they deal with applications. And that is a sign of weakness and delay in the system. You have one case, but you have 50 applications in the same case because of the technicalities and so on. So I think there is jurisprudence, it is developing, sometimes contradiction between court of appeal judges and, and, and so forth. I think that is bound to happen. But there is definitely a move really uh, to overcome this principle. But there is no formula, you know, you have to be innovative. There is no solution to everything. You are lawyers, you have to develop the law, you have to argue your case before the judge that this is a technicality, it doesn't go to the root of the matter, the other party is not prejudiced by it, and so on and so forth. So you develop your arguments around that pro issue so that you can convince the judges that the matter before, or the error really is an error that is punishable by cost or whatever, or by an amendment, uh, and, 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 and so forth. So, I think we are moving from there, but it is good really, when you look that really now, we have less application before the courts, and we have more substantive matters. The second, uh, uh, is on the East African community. Uh, definitely I think there is wide scope and this is something which uh, uh, your professors of practice here uh, I'm sure will not down about the need really for us what, because the East African community is, it, it encompasses a lot of things. Okay, so it's, it, you can have it as one subject but you can also streamline it in many other subjects. Okay, so what approach you will take and so forth, it is something for consideration uh, here uh, uh, at the law school. When you did international law, then the subject of treaties, you can take it up. Okay, when you deal with, uh, with uh, uh, international trade uh, and so on, and the East, uh, when you deal with uh, uh, court procedures, you can deal with the East African Court of Justice and so on and so forth. So there is scope, and I think it's how you mainstream, you can either mainstream it, or even as a specialized subject, East African community law. I know at the European level, EU law is really, really huge. Okay, it's really huge. Okay. We have, don't have that much jurisprudence, but we are evolving. You know that even the jurisprudence of the East African Court of Justice is, 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 is building up, is building up. Okay, and the third thing, I think it is more an observation about the, uh, the place of technology in the court system. We are of course late, uh, it has been introduced in phases, uh, the commercial, every new district court being built now, okay, is uh, built in, it has a built in uh, 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 technology. So all the new primary courts, uh, district courts now, over 20 or 26 being built, have let a system of, 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 uh, of technological demand. Of course, here in Tanzania, a case law began by the judges accepting electronic evidence as a matter of judicial decision, not as a matter of legislation. But there have been amendments to the Criminal Procedure Code civil procedure code to accept electronic evidence. And again, the regulations also should be able to govern uh, the timing uh, and so on. You don't even, when you file electronically, you don't need a physical signature. There is an electronic signature, okay, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So those regulations, I think, this is something, of course, with your law of evidence here, I think should be uh, something that uh, could, be, could be worked about because uh, just for your information, the international, many courts now, there is now a leading court in the world, it's in Singapore, it's paperless. 
Okay, this way we want to go. Okay, the paper is called, there is no paper, nothing. It's just equipment. Okay, but this way when we go, we are building slowly, as I said, but we still we still have a long way to go because some of our areas are very remote, some of our primary courts are really in despicable conditions, uh, and so on and so forth. But I think the new high courts, there's a new high court coming up in Kigoma, there's a new high court which will be opened in Mara, those will be technologically equipped. Uh, in Kisutu now also, we have video conferences between the court and Magereza, Sigerea. Sometimes you don't have to move the prisoners and so on. It is a development, as I say, costly development, but we have to do it piecemeal. Uh, but there is improvement, and I think your point is well taken. Uh, we need to, 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 to update our laws so that they govern really uh, uh, the, the, the use of technology in our, in our controls. So I thank you all for your contribution. Another round of applause, please. So I would like to welcome Dr. Ramba. invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. We have come to the end of our interesting session and I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Law School of Tanzania and on behalf of the students' community to thank you, my Lord, Ambassador Mopachu, for the very insightful and yet captivating lecture and reflections on the duty of young lawyers to the public and the future of the legal profession. My Lord, we understand that it's not easy for your diary just to be vacant to a person of your caliber understanding. And therefore, we understand that you have to shelf other important engagements in order to accommodate our timetable in a very busy schedule. We thank you, my Lord, for your readiness, time, and experience that you have shared with our students. My Lord, the Law School of Tanzania is established for the purpose of imparting practical legal skills to law graduates who are aspiring to become legal practitioners. And among the areas that we normally taught and emphasize are the duty of legal practitioners to the public, to the judiciary, to the profession, client, and the society at large. Of course, and the associated ethical values. Your presentation, my Lord, on the duty of young lawyers to the public and the future of the legal profession was apt to their professional dreams and aspirations and the future of members as, as a future members of the bar. My Lord, your lecture has touched on a number of areas that indeed the task that lie ahead of them is momentous, that they have to serve the public and they have to adhere to laws and regulations that they ought to know that they have a responsibility and a duty to pay back to the society and not simply to work for gain of administration of justice and not in the society. But my Lord, you've also touched on the need for them the confidence in the judicial system. But of course, you've also highlighted on the opportunities and challenges 
that lies ahead. My Lord, we hope that this very useful lecture to glide in the atmosphere of legal practice, but also, as the African saying goes, the monkey has tramped over a thousand arrows. My Lord, your vast experience and the professional accomplishments in the public service and the judiciary in particular is a living testimony that uh, that can be likened to the story. Your lecture was not only seasoned with academic flattuses, but also life experiences and wisdom from a senior citizen that cannot be found in the library shelves for your presentation. And as I get to the end of my brief uh, thinking note, in an event of this dimension, it cannot be done easily without a lot of preparations. The preparation for this event was championed by an able team which was motivated and dedicated. And this was none other than the students' committee that did all the preparations. I know I cannot thank everybody, but just understand that we appreciate the involvement of everybody in this particular event. And finally, it has happened. And we have had Chief Justice of the United Republic of Tanzania presenting to us this very insightful lecture. <laughs> Lastly, but not the least, my Lord, I thank everybody who has taken part in this evening gathering. And let me now invite the Deputy Principal to simply come and present a gesture of appreciation, much as we understand that you are a good reader, you are a good writer, so we are going to share something that you will definitely take with you, my Lord. Thank you. Karibuni tena kwenye gala yetu ya 29th cohort. Um, baada ya kusikiliza speech ambayo imetolewa leo, now we're going to proceed with the main cause of the event that most of us were waiting for. Uh, we're going to proceed with dinner and drinks while we wait for the uh, deputy principal and the in charge of the legal training to return to present the medals, uh, the medals for Younger and Simba. Thank you.